To get started with building the first Revit model, we need to create some levels and we need to create a grid. A BIM model works parametrically. You create relationships between things and we'll use these guidelines to help set the boundaries for walls and floors and roofs. That makes it so that if you ever want to change the height of a floor or something, you come back and you change the level lines, the walls and roofs and floors will go with it. So in order to add levels, we want to start in an elevation view. So over here, this lower left palette is your views palette, your project browser. If I double click on one of my elevation views, it takes me to the view. I started by using the architecture template file, which comes in with two floors already. Let's go ahead and make a four story building. So I'm just going to draw a new level line. The level line button can be found under your architecture tab in the ribbon and then the datum area and here's the level line. You could also copy one of the existing levels. As I move my mouse you'll see that it's giving me dynamic dimensions. I would like to make this 12 feet. Notice that it's not tw exactly 12 feet, so once I make the level line, before I click off of it, I can come in and type 12 feet, hit enter, and it will adjust that. And then I'll do it one more time. Again, before I deselect, I w if I click here, I can type in that dimension. When you're finished, you can click the modify button, and that'll end the command. If I wanted to move this lower level line to also be 12 feet away from the floor above, I could just click that level, 12 feet, and now those are all equally spaced. You can also modify levels by coming directly to the level bubble and typing in data. So by moving that thing down 12 feet, I now have level 1 at a level of negative 2 feet. That's not really what I want, so if I just click here, I can type 0 feet. I already went in and adjusted the rest of these so that each of my floors are 12 feet spaced. Okay, going back to plan view. So I want to go to a floor plan level 1. You'll see automatically as I created those level lines in my elevation view, Revit created new floor plans for each of those levels. I want to go back to level 1 and start creating some grid lines. The grid line tool is also found in the datum area on the ribbon, this little button. Once I click that button, it opens this tool specific options bar. Um, many of the tools will do this, so sometimes it will look like nothing happened, but if you see this green highlighted area, those are the options for the tool. Uh, so as long as I have this straight line selected, I'm going to go ahead and draw a grid line across. I'll give myself another one, 24 feet's fine, another one at 24 feet, and one more at 24 feet. So those are my horizontal grids. And then I will also create some grid lines going in the opposite direction. Actually, I'm going to hit escape and start from the bottom. I'd like the bubbles to go across the top. As always, when I'm done with a command, I can come back and hit the modify button to complete that command. If you would like to control the labeling on your grid bubbles. You can just single click on the bubble and over here in your properties palette you'll get the name. For the horizontal grid sometimes it's nice to actually label these with letters whereas the vertical along the vertical axis would label them with numbers. And using the same method that I did with the level lines I'm going to go ahead and click on each of these grid lines use my my dynamic dimensions down here. I'm going to give, make the dimension 30 feet in this direction. Okay, and now I have my grid. This would be a good time to save your project, so if you just hit the R button, the Revit logo, save as project, work with your team to come up with file saving strategies, for now, I'm just going to put this on the desktop. This is our test 6261 project. We'll now start to create geometry by using the massing and site tools.
we will create an in-place mask. Go ahead and call it mass one. And you, we want to be on level one. We'll start by just creating some geometry. You have to have something to generate your 3D form from. So that could be a line, a rectangle, some other shape, or a curve, or even a point. We're going to use the rectangle tool. You'll see that I can snap to the intersection of my grid lines. I want to click and let go, drag to the other grid line intersections, click and let go. And now I get the option to lock these, these geometry to the grid lines, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. That means if I change the location of the grid lines, the mass geometry is going to go with it. Okay, I'm going to click my modify command to finish that. I will go to level 3 and do the same thing. I want to draw a rectangle, but this time I'm going to go from the intersection of A1 to the intersection of D3, so not quite as big as the first one. Again, lock these. Go back to modify. Now I want to look at this in my 3D view. So I can see here under 3D views, I can double click there. I can also go view default 3D to see that 3D view. Those are the same views. Okay, so there are my two planes that I created and I'm going to turn these into three-dimensional geometry. Click on that, I get some new options that appear. I will click create form, solid form. Revit automatically tries to interpret what kind of extrusion you would like based on the shape of the input geometry, most of the time a straight extrusion. I'm going to change this to 24 feet. Let me do the same thing for this upper rectangle, create form, change it to 24 feet. Okay, so there's my two masses. In 3D views, just so you know, um, if you hit shift, and right mouse click, that's to rotate, and you can scroll in and out using your middle mouse button. You can also change the way the view displays here, wireframe, hidden line, shaded, constant color, photorealistic. You can select any of your masses, and you can have additional additional editing options. I can divide the surface, I can look at this in x-ray view, I can add an edge, add a profile, which is like adding a contour line or an additional floor inside of that. I can also edit uh, an edge by moving it with the gizmo or using the move tool. I can edit a point. I can also select a face. If I hover over an edge and hit the tab key, it scrolls through my selection options so that I can select a face. Okay, so those are the basic mass editing commands. For our purposes, this simple mass that we're working with here is good enough, so I'm going to click Finish Mass to exit this, the mass editing mode. Okay, there's my mass. Now that we have the mess, it's pretty easy to create walls, floors, and roofs. So we want to go again to our Massing and Site Ribbon tab. Let's start by creating walls, wall by face, which this is essentially that we're going to use the 3D form that we created in the mess in order to generate the architectural components. We will use basic wall, generic 8 inches for all of our early studies. Um, and then we can go ahead into the model. Let's just check really quick. Oh, good thing we checked. Base constraint. We want to start at level 1. For the lower floor, we want the top constraint to go up to level 3. Now let's select the faces. And notice that those are turning from two-dimensional surfaces to three-dimensional surfaces that have thickness and they have all of the properties of this generic wall. Let's do the same thing for the second floor. The second volume will make those start at level three. And let's have the top level unconnected because level four is actually somewhere in here. So this is a fifth, a fifth level would be the roof. 
Now let's go ahead and make the roofs. Select the roof tool, also in the massing and sight ribbon. Basic roof, generic 12 inches, will suit our purposes. Click, and this time you have to actually click the Create Roof button. You don't have to do that for the floors, but you have to do that for the roofs. So again, I'll click once here and click Create Roof. One thing you'll notice about these roofs is that the roofs and the walls appear to be overlapping. I'm going to use my Align tool. Just select any object so that I get these modify, modify tools that show up. I'm going to use the Align tool to essentially bring that little edge of the roof to the inside surface of the wall so that they're not overlapping. So the way the Align tool works is you select the surface you want to align to, which in this case is that inside edge of the wall, and then the surface that I want to align. And you'll see that it actually moved that edge in a little bit. I'll do the same thing here. Inside surface of the wall, the edge of the roof. Keep working my way around. Okay, that one looks good. I'll do the same thing below. And on my lower roof, I have one more issue, and that is that Sapphira is very particular in how it treats different components. It needs to understand that a wall is a wall, a roof is a roof, and a floor is a floor. Right now, I actually have this horizontal surface as qualified as a roof, but in this portion of the building, it's actually a floor, right? It's not connected to the exterior. So I'm gonna start by just dragging it over I drag it over a little bit too far. Now I'll use my align tool again. I want to go to the surface of the wall, take that edge, align those two edges. So now my roof, my roofs and walls form the exterior envelope. My floors will be interior surfaces. Instead of making the floors by face from the massing geometry, let's go ahead and make the floors explicitly. So under the Architecture tab, go ahead and check Floor. And what I want to do is go back to Level 1 Floor Plan. And then I'm going to just draw the profile of the floor here under my Draw Tools. Select the Rectangular option. And I'm going to draw the floor so that it's at the interior boundary of those walls. and hit the check mark when I'm finished. Go back to my 3D view. And one thing is that you can see that the floors always project below the floor level line, whereas the walls always start at the floor level line and go up. In this particular case, at the ground level, we want the wall to go down and cover up that little edge. So I'm going to hit the control key Control key allows me to select multiple objects simultaneously and select these lower walls. And I'm going to move the bottom of the wall down by one foot so that it covers the edge of that floor. So here in my properties under base offset, I want to set that to negative one foot and say apply. Okay, let's put a couple more floors. Let's put our in other interior floors in place. So I'll go to level two. I want to basically do the same thing, create a floor, either by drawing a rectangle or I can actually select the walls themselves. Notice when I select the wall that it puts the line to the exterior edge. If I click on this little arrow, I can move where that justification is. So now it'll put it to the interior edge and I can go ahead and click around to select all the walls and then hit the check mark. It says the floor overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join the geometry and cut the overlapping volume? Sometimes these warnings are helpful and sometimes they aren't. I'm going to say no because I think that we should be okay. I'm going to go to level three. I'll do the same thing. Add a floor. I'm just going to draw the rectangle. This one's asking, would I like walls that go to this floor's 
bot to attach to its bottom. Again, I'm going to say no. I've already attached the walls to the level line, and you don't want to over constrain your model. So as long as you keep things attached to those levels, your levels and your grids, you should be in pretty good shape. And then level four. Okay, that looks pretty good. I can look at this in wireframe, make sure I have all my floors in place. It looks like I do. And go ahead and save my model. Okay, really the last thing we need to do is add some windows, add some glazing to this. But let's go ahead and start changing some, some of these surfaces to glazed surfaces. One of the easiest ways is if the entire wall is glass, which you know how I feel about that. If the entire wall is glass, you can actually change the wall type to a glass family. So here under my properties, instead of generic wall, if I scroll down, I get some other options under curtain walls. And I want you to choose the one that says storefront. The only reason we're choosing storefront is that it automatically has some mullions in it, and so it looks a little bit more honest than a plane of glass, which is what the curtain wall would give you. I have to click Unjoin Elements because now I have two different wall types and they can't stay joined. So that's no problem. There's my new glass wall. The other thing I can do is actually put windows, discrete components that are windows. If I click on the window, Windows tool, here are my options by default only the fixed window types are loaded into Revit. If you would like some other options, here you can load the families, go down to Windows, and then you can select another type. I like casement windows, so we could use a casement. A single casement with trim, open, and that will import that family into our Revit, Revit list. The other thing I can do is I can create custom sizes within the family. So I, I don't have to go out and edit the family. I can actually make custom sizes in, in my project file. So I do that by clicking Edit Type. I would duplicate this. Let's say I want to make one that's 72 by 72. then I would change here the width to say 72. Okay, so now I have my new casement window that's 72 by 72. And if I just move into the area, into the model area, I can start to place those windows. So I'll place a couple of windows. But you'll notice that there's very little control if I'm placing the windows in my 3D view. So what I'm going to do is I want to modify these in my south elevation. And then I, if I hit control while I'm selecting, I can select all of those at the same time. They're all on level 3, which is correct. I'm going to set my sill height. The sill is the bottom plate of the window. Click Apply. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Those are getting to be more orderly. If I want to set this first one to be exactly six feet from the edge of the building, I can do that. And then I can go in and change these to be 12 feet apart. I want a few more of those. I can select both of these and use my copy tool and my snap with base point. I can copy these windows. And then I will take them all again, copy them up one more time. This time, yes, level four. Let me change this to three feet again. Okay, so that's a little bit more organized. If I go back to my three-dimensional view, there are my windows. This is a super beautiful design that is now basically ready to be taken into Sapphira. Go ahead and save your project.